Hi, I'm Jeff. This is Tropical Plants at 53 degrees north. Now, today it's a rainy day. It's the first rain we've had in three months. So I'm pretty happy because it means for once I can get into the greenhouse and get out of other people's gardens and talk about what I love to talk about the most. And today we're going to have a little chat about taking care of this beauty over here. <laughs> there it is. So that is a regal pelagonium and it has the strange name of Anside Fringed Aztec. So we're going to talk about some of its care needs and how to get it to look like that, which is actually pretty easy. So let's get started. Okay, so let's get cracking onto this one. So this is a regal pelagonium and it's outside fringed Aztec and what a fantastic pelagonium it really is. Just take a moment to dive into those blooms and really check them out. They are absolutely wonderful. I just love this plant. This is definitely one of my favorite pelagoniums. It is a, an award winner. Um, it's got an AGM, so it's an Award of Garden Merit from the RHS, the Royal Horticultural Society in the UK. And you can just see the, what fantastic, spectacular clusters of blooms these are. We have these supposedly uh, five petals. I say supposedly, it's the, the two upper petals are supposedly different to the bottom three. And they kind of are, they're not totally different, but I think that splash of what they call or they know as carmine which is a colour I've never heard of before but that's the way it's described in most places that sell this thing and actually there's not many sellers I've only actually managed to find two sellers uh, of this plant online and both were sold out one was Fibrex Nurseries which is well known for producing pelagoniums growing pelagoniums now what I've actually got here this this particular plant there are a few of the blooms going over now you can just see those ones there are going over but it will be flowering and keep coming back sporadically for quite a long time yet and it will it will produce this kind of display for quite a long time usually from like early May right up to uh, the beginning of November and you can get even longer than that if you do it under glass like I'm doing and, and heat the greenhouse so I'll tell you a little bit about the care of this fantastic plant and um, a little bit of interesting information about it. So it's a compact bushy plant. Um, you can see that the petals there are like serrated and the design in the middle, as if it's designed, uh, it's kind of like a feathery effect. And like we said, like I said before, we've got this, this colour. To me, I don't know, it's kind of like a magenta to me, but uh, carmine is the, the official name of the colour. So uh, we've got the one flowering season we've already talked about. So light, so where would I keep, where would you keep this? So most pelagoniums, well all pelagoniums like, the, they like the sun. This specific one will burn if it's kept in really hot sun, especially if it's under glass. So like a partially shaded, I mean I've got shades, I've took them off today, I'll just turn you around here. Oh, excuse the quick pan, but you can just see on the glass there on the on the outer side of the glass I've put uh, an 80% shade cloth on there and there are some shade blinds which you can just see there which I have retracted today but they will pull down I've retracted them because it's chucking it down today and it was so dark in here so let's just move around again Got so much in bloom at the moment it's just a spectacular time of the year and on this sunshine that we've been having in the UK has really set everything off. Yeah, so a very long flowering season. Uh, the light we've said, sun to partial shade. The media that I've got it in is, it's a John Innes number two. So that's just like a general purpose, uh, loam based compost, which does have some nutrients in it. But after a while, I mean, I've had it in this for over 12 months. So after a while, you will need to feed it. During the growing season, a weekly feed, something high potash like a tomato feed. I've just got, because I'm, well, not because I'm lazy, because I've got a lot to do. Uh, I've just got one of these sticks in that you put in. Uh, it lasts a couple of months and that saves me a job. So uh, something like that. They're very, they're very easy to grow and they're very, very tolerant of most things. 
Um, they are they ain't tolerant of frost, but as long as you keep them above frost, so just to be just to be safe, I keep it above five degrees Celsius. Um, you will, and again, as far as heat goes, as long as it's not in that direct sun for a long time, uh, you can easily get it up to 30, 30 plus degrees Celsius, really. I mean, in here, uh, I've had it up to, I think it's up to about 28 so far this year, but it is only beginning of June, so it's quite early in the season yet. We will get hotter temperatures. Well, I hope we will. Uh, the problem is with, with the UK, once it starts raining, it tends not to stop. So that could be it for our summer, uh, but we'll see anyway. So it's known as a tender perennial. You can plant them out in the garden, but I just prefer to see it up close. It's such a spectacular plant. It will tend to bloom over 12 degrees. The, the higher, the better, really. So if you once you start getting to 15 to 20 degrees Celsius, then that's that's its uh, its preferred kind of temperatures. You do need to deadhead it regularly. Uh, as with all pelagoniums, all these petals will drop one by one, so they are a bit messy if you're going to keep them in the house. You can see I've already got petals falling off here, and these ones here, see how they come off, they come away very easily. So they will all fall off. Actually, this this one, out of all the pelagoniums, is quite good at holding on to them, and you can see that when they have gone over, uh, because it's like a cluster of blooms, you can just take that right back, um, take it right back down there and my fingers pointing to there and you can just snip it off there and get the whole thing at once other pelagoniums tend to like they shed like dogs um, but anyway yeah that that's that's the way to get rid of them you do need to deadhead them and they will just keep coming the flowers the flower the flower clusters will keep coming and coming right through the growing season you definitely get lots of flower power for your money there. I would water it well, especially during the growing season. Good way to tell whether it's dried out or not, because you must let it dry in between waterings, is to lift up the pot. They go very, very light. They really do burn through that. Can you burn through water? They really do suck up that water. And once they're dry, you'll know it just by the, the weight of it. It will feel as light as a feather when you pick it up. Of course, you can just stick your fingers in the in the soil as well if you want to they are a mediterranean plant um, well they've kind of become known as a mediterranean plant they, they, they actually come from south africa but uh, it's this a similar kind of climate so yeah water it well it does it go through the water quite quickly i'm fine at this time of year it's needing a daily water okay so we're not on the arm side fringed aztec at the moment we're on another pelagonium this is a no id one that I've had for a number of years, but I thought I'd just point at this one for a little while while we discuss the propagation of them. So if you want to propagate any pelagoniums, they're all dead, dead easy. All you need is a non-flowering shoot, and you can actually see this one is needing of a water. You can just see, just looking at it, have a slightly floppy. This is one of the, it's like a, almost a hurry variety. And this one doesn't really like humidity, but it's managing and it's coping as long as I get a fan on it and get it well, well ventilated. So, yeah, so it's the same thing for all of them. You find a non flowering shoot and you simply take it back to just below a leaf node, and it's, it's a, a common way of propagating all sorts of plants like a, a soft cutting not as opposed to a hardwood cutting, a soft one, and it will really easily root, as long as you get it in some well-drained compost, something like a, a multi-purpose with some extra vermiculite or some perlite in there just to kind of open it up a little bit. Um, I would not bother with hormone powder or anything like that because they root really readily. They're quite a slow growing plant, so it will take a while for that to come. I'll just show you here. So this one here, which is about to bloom, there's two cuttings in there and I took those because the parents had developed like a virus and I took, I just managed to get some cuttings of the only section of it that didn't have the virus and they've both come back really well. You can see there are a few bits, a few leaves getting botrytis in there, which I'm going to have to pull out. But it won't do it any damage. It's, it's going to be fine. Uh, that one was taken, would have been late last year, so like November time, something like that. And that's how big it's grown. 
in the past six months so it's quite a slow grower but, but flowers really early you don't want pelargoniums to go big because once they go big they get very woody and they don't flower the same they produce more leaves this one over here has developed can you see these like crispy ends to the leaves and i've already pulled a lot of these leaves off well that's the damage caused by systemic insecticide because this was covered in aphids and i sprayed it with an insect with a systemic insecticide and these this is the the result of it so i'm definitely rethinking my use of systemics in future i'm going to try some neem oil and, and uh, some somebody suggested something a more organic version so i'm going to try that instead because i'm not really liking the effects of the this systemic on on various plants not just the not just the pelargoniums this is another pelargonium down here quite a new one for me i mean very gaudy color but it's it's nice in its own way so yeah as far as propagation goes really easy non-flowering shoot if you get a, a shoot there is flowering like this one for example just cut the flowers off cut cut that stem of flower off and take it a bit further down take it below a leaf node and i would just leave a couple of leaves on you don't want loads and loads of leaves because it will then begin they'll begin to rot because it will rot very quite easily so yes it will need covering to keep the moisture in but you're going to have to keep airing it out every so often to make sure that those leaves don't rot and you'll soon know as soon as it perks up that it, that it has struck as we say over here in the uk and the the uh, shoot has, has you know developed some roots so that's propagation uh, other things to look out for this is a general pelargonium thing really um just see if i can see any down here so it does all pelargoniums do suffer from botrytis quite a lot especially in lower temperatures and uh, once they get botrytis it's very difficult to get rid of and it spreads through all the leaves so i don't think because we've been so dry here and on, on this side of the greenhouse it's been very low in humidity so it's not going to get it so things like that where you can see it's beginning to fade and go a bit yellow just pull it off at its base you can usually take it right back to the node quite easily um, a good tip for all pelargoniums this because whenever you see these yellowing leaves and this isn't botrytis but uh, they always prefer to be a bit more airy and they, are, they do have a tendency to grow a lot of leaves so you need to take those out anything that's reddening a little bit anything that's yellowing or going gray especially that's the botrytis one the one that's going gray with like a dust on it uh, you need to pull those off so this particular one is looking good at the moment there's an awful lot of leaves in there and i'm almost hoping to find some yellowing ones so i can give it a bit more space now there's one look see there right so that's that's beginning to kind of grow go a bit fungusy towards the edge so pull it out so that really is the only thing that's a little bit unusual or a little bit out of the ordinary for for plants in general because you don't tend to defoliate plants but this is one that does stand up again this is one that does benefit from a, a little airing out the, they love ventilation they don't like humidity now because my greenhouse has orchids in it i do try to keep it uh, quite humid you can see some of the petals are beginning to fall off there um, and as a as a, a genus of plants the pelargoniums are not really that they don't love it that much but having said that despite the fact that i try to keep it uh, quite humid you can see just looking around here there's one there's one there in the middle another pelargonium there another pelargonium up there you know my my greenhouse is more of an orchid stroke carnivorous plant stroke streptocarpus greenhouse they all love high humidity the pelargoniums don't but they still manage to rub along fine and i'm not having any problems with botrytis 
um, but it's definitely worth bearing that in mind if you are if you do have a, a, some kind of a, a space especially in the house in a conservatory where you're not likely to get the ventilation you're not likely to get the air movement i think that's the saving grace for me i have a big whopping fan down there i have lots of louvre windows and vents and they absolutely love the ventilation so fresh air is something that all pelagoniums love so that's definitely worth bearing that in mind pests uh, yes they do suffer from the same kind of pests that lots of plants do aphids vine weevils white fly tend to be the main ones again i'm fortunate in that i don't tend to find many pests on the pelagoniums touchwood at the moment anyway i've been growing them for quite a number of years so that's a quick video on how to take care of this wonderful wonderful plant oh before I go something really interesting that I thought I'd mention and I mentioned this to all sorts of people but I thought I'd look it up and try and get to the bottom of, of the the mistake if you like now lots of people call these geraniums and if you look online or go to a garden center you'll see them labeled as geraniums even now and I've talked about this before this is this this idea that once something has once a mistake has been made and it becomes common common knowledge i have to say that in inverted commas it becomes common knowledge and everybody knows that these are geraniums and in actual fact they're not the pelagoniums geraniums is a geranium is a completely different genera than the same family they're under the geraniaceae family but that they're still completely different genera so you've got a pelagonium that's this particular plant uh, which is uh, one genera and then you've got the also known as hardy geranium uh, genera which is the ones that you find in gardens that don't mind going down to below zero and they lose all the leaves in winter so there are there are quite a number of differences so the pelagoniums are tender they come from south africa they're not hardy you tend to find that the two upper petals are different to the, the two lower petals it might only be a slight difference but the difference is there they don't lose all the leaves the leaves look different they're just a different genera and the mistake came about because the uh, pelagoniums came from or were brought from south africa to europe in the 1700s now just let that sink in for a moment so this mistake this mislabeling mistake has been going on for 300 years and still people call them geraniums um, now okay it doesn't really matter it's only a name but it's just it's just a little thing to think about when when people are talking about orchids and feeding orchids and well everybody knows this is true and everybody knows that that's true when it comes down to any kind of plant really and i think that's just a, a fun fantastic example of how it's always worth questioning things and trying to come up with a reason for why everybody knows so there is a difference as well between the types of pelagonium so this is an angel pelagonium we're looking at now and the one that i've got down here is a regal pelagonium so these are different kinds of hybrids and uh, i must go into detail over what the different hybrids the regals the angels um, the and I, it just completely escapes me the rest of them there, there are there, there are all sorts and they're coming out all the time i notice i think firebreaks have come out with another new one this year so uh yeah that would be something they'd be interested to go into so if you want me to go into that and find out a little bit about that i will do just let me know in the comments so uh like i say this is the most beautiful of the pelagoniums that i've come across at the moment uh, for a long time anyway and if you've got one that you think is nicer than this one then let me know the name of it in the comments because i want to look it up and see if i agree with you or not so i hope you enjoyed this video and i hope that might help you in your quest to find the best pelagonium and perhaps you grow them and you want to see how to improve your growing and if that's helped you let me know in the comments give us a like if you thought it was worth it and i will see you on the next one Bye.